So in this video, we start off as usual with a galaxy inside a bottle. And we start off also with a burning desire to clean up the uh, Comfy UI user interface, to clean up all the noodles and to get it looking nice and smart. We're gonna be looking at how to do that using an amazing plugin that will clean things up amazingly and give us superpowers beyond beyond your imagination. Well, maybe not beyond your imagination if you've used Automatic 11.11, because we're going to be bringing some of the functionality that we see inside of Automatic 11.11 inside of this user interface. At least that's going to be the case for those guys in the YouTube membership, and that will give you all the details, and it's going to be amazing. So we start off with the user interface here, and we want to basically recreate this, but without the soup, without the noodle soup going on. So we go ahead and clear everything, okay? And we need to install a plugin, and to do that, we're going to be going to Efficiency Nodes Comfy UI uh, on GitHub. That's the one we're going to be using. And you can see a sample here of what this particular genius has created with the anime, <laughs> with the anime going on there. And there are various workflows that there are inside of this project that you can uh, take a look at. Now, there's a direct download link. If you want to just download that, I think you can just, uh, you can extract that with a zip uh, 7-zip maybe, inside of the custom nodes directory in Comfy UI. Now I've already done that and uh, you need to restart Comfy uh, in order to get everything showing up. There are some in installation instructions down here if you need more assistance. Let's go to Comfy and let's start this thing up. So we'll start off by going to add node and efficiency nodes. So you should see this menu once it's installed. We're going to go to loaders. We're going to choose efficient loader and we can then start choosing our, our tensor file. I think we can zoom in a little bit like that. Let's go for the one with the baked VAE. So Dream Shaper 6 baked VAE. We've got a clip skip option. So I spoke about automatic 1111 and the features that you find there. And maybe you can see now what I was talking about. We can also load up a uh, LoRa stack and uh, LoRa, different LoRa's and, uh, and their strengths. We're just going to focus on keeping it nice and simple. Let's go ahead and um, we'll go with 512 by 512. For our batch, we'll keep it size 1. We can do fancy stuff that doesn't necessarily involve the batch size. Uh, we'll choose another efficiency node. This one is going to be the sampler and there are two. We're going to choose the first one, the efficiency, the efficient K sampler. Now watch carefully. How difficult was that? So you can see how easy this is. Now, should we be able at this stage to produce an image? I think we should, but let's not just create some galaxy in a bottle that we're going to, we're going to get rid of anyway. Let's just go ahead and create a preview. So down here, we've got preview image enabled. Shall we try to run this and see if it will actually run? Well, you can see it's reading and it's running. <laughs> So for once, we haven't got a galaxy in a bottle. We've got positive. Uh, who knows what that's reading right there. So with the power of editing, I went ahead and copied the text from the previous render and changed the CKPT name and the VAE name for the uh, for this particular render so that it was the same as the previous one that we did and also put in the same seed number. And I think we've got an identical looking, we've got an identical looking render there. So it's, it's looking nice. And it's also looking neat. Now, this ability to preview here is one of the main features that you have uh, with this efficiency nodes for Comfy UI. It makes life a lot easier. But Kevin, I hear you saying, we haven't got an output image. We've just got a preview image. So let's zoom out and let's go ahead. And I think we need to see an image, don't you? So we'll come here, we'll click and drag and we can choose save image. And you know what? 
we I'm actually gonna copy this because I wanna see if we can get this again. Let's change the CFG to eight Q prompt. And we've now actually got a saved image. So we've now got the preview image and the saved image. So this is how you can make Comfy UI. Uh, you can actually disable this if you want to, if you've got the save image there. So this is how you can make Comfy UI a lot more neat. Think about how much easier it is to actually get this looking the way it is. And, uh, how we've got so few noodles here. I don't think, I don't know if it's possible to actually combine the save image so that we don't have to repeat this like that. Uh, it may be possible. There's an option we, we can sort of shift click and then right click and choose nest selected nodes that might work. It might not work. I haven't tried it, but that's basically how we can clean up the user interface. Let's take another look at efficiency nodes. And let's see what we can do with this extension. One of the most useful features we can apply is an X, Y plot. And if I right click and choose add, let's go ahead and choose efficiency nodes, X, Y plot and X, Y plot. We've now got the basis for what could be a really useful feature that would allow us to make comparisons. Now the X, Y plot has got a basic function, which is to if I bring it up here, you'll be able to see we've got a script option, script option here, and it's basically going to deliver a script to the sampler. And that script is going to be used instead of the usual output to create several images that we can compare. So we can compare things like what happens if we work with different CFG amounts or different schedulers. If you always wanted to know what the schedulers do, we could compare that. We could compare what happens when, when you use Euler or Euler, Euler Ancestral, Hewn, DPM2 and so on. On the same seed, we can then bring this down here and we can initially just join the script because we know the script is going to go there and we have dependencies and we know the dependencies have to go there because that was something that was uh, not connected. Uh, it is strange that you've got clip here, which doesn't seem to connect anywhere. But we don't need to worry about that. We need to now connect the X and Y. K sampler output image. We can have a plot or an image. We're going to choose images and it's useful whilst we're in this sort of zoomed in view because we can see exactly what we're doing. We can choose efficiency nodes and we can go again to X, Y plot and inputs. What do we want to test? I would really like to test what happens when you have different CFG scales. So I want to see what happens when you use one uh, CFG value on the same seed and then you use a completely different CFG value. Currently it's set to eight or well, we can choose whatever we want. We're going to set the count to two. That means we can set the CFG for one and then maybe just make this 16. What about that? Let's make that 16. And that's going to give us two counts of CFGs that we can test. You'll see exactly how all of this uh, combines together a bit later on. Zooming out, we can actually make a connection so we can connect. I think it doesn't matter. We can connect this to X or Y. We've got X or Y there. We've got, we've got the option. Then we can once again go in, right click efficiency nodes, X, Y plot. What are we going to choose this time? What can we compare against the CFG scale? Well, we could compare the VAEs or the schedulers, or we could compare the samplers. What about the samplers? That's another area of curiosity, isn't it? How do the different samplers compare to one another? We've got the X and Y there. We might as well connect that to the X and see whether that turns out well. And uh, let's go. We can choose sampler Euler. Uh, let's choose normal and let's choose Euler. Um, let's choose Karas. Then let's choose, I don't know, um, this guy here, uh, DPM2 Ancestral. And let's choose normal for that one. And let's see if this actually does anything. I think all of the nodes are connected, aren't they? Dependency, script, script, 
uh, dependencies here. We haven't got anything connected for clip, but that doesn't seem to produce any sort of problem. And if we really wanted to be thorough, we could output an image uh, and say save image. So let's put that there like that. And uh, let's just put that out of the picture for the time being and Q prompt. If there's any problem, it will tell us. Okay, so not very much happened. Uh, I do think we probably got an image here, which is the same as this image here. And the, the preview here looks pretty much as good as the output. So the uh, case sampler efficient seems to produce a pretty decent looking uh, preview. So why did nothing happen? Why did we not get any comparison sheet? Well, if we come up here, the script is just going in here, but the sample the sampler state is set to sample. And you know, this is the sampler name and the sampler schedule. Let's change this to script and let's see what happens now. You might be able to see it's actually running several times, which seems very, uh, very good. That looks like what we want to happen. And it seems to be repeating again and again. I wouldn't worry too much about that. If you see that happening, that seems to be what we want. After all, do we not have one, two, three options here and two options here? So we should have six and oh, they look kind of different. So we've got Euler, Euler Karas, Euler Normal, Euler Karas, DPM2 Normal, which looks a little bit ridiculous um, with little bits of paper just hanging out of nowhere. And uh, We've got Euler Karas CFG of 16, CFG of 16 for normal. And we've got DPM2 CFG of 16, which looks totally ridiculous. It's, it looks like something out of science fiction. So that's our comparison. Uh, as you can see, one interesting feature here is that we've got a kind of a surface here, which with Karas is turned into a hand. So you can see the kind of differences that you would get with different scripts. And that's really the power of this particular feature. Uh, notice that here in the save image, we've got six different images that we're saving. So it's saving each of these different uh, images and we can see them in a grid, um, a grid formation as well. I'm not sure if it actually saves this grid formation, but we can cycle through Comsa. There we are and uh, close that to see all of them. And we can, if we want to save this image, if, if, if we want to do that, I don't think this actually saves by default. So you've got a comparison there, which is the kind of functionality you've probably been looking for inside of this software. But I think when you actually look at this and give it some consideration, it's actually, I feel a little bit easier than automatic 11, 11. Um, I don't know how you feel about that, but I think uh, when I set this up, I kind of get a sense of what I'm doing. Whereas with automatic 1111, um, I'm sort of like, I'm praying and hoping the force is with me when I'm making selections for making these sorts of grids. I can never quite tell what's going to happen. But whereas with this one, because you have to think it through, you sort of know exactly how it's going to come out. But that is how you can get these sorts of comparisons. Look, there are lots of other features that you can get with this particular uh, if, uh, efficiency node uh, uh, extension. And I would definitely suggest that you try it out. And if you want to learn a little bit more, uh, sign up for the course. I'll have a link in the description for that.